Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis here with a look at, arguably, the first glimpse of 2012's third-party combining robot arms race. I say arguably because he actually came out in 2011. Whatever your timeline, this is TFC Toys' X-Graver, the Herald of Hercules. Back in January, I decided to go in on the big green machine, and Orson over at Captured Prey gave me a good deal on an arm and a leg. So let's start off by looking at that arm. Xgraver's alt mode definitely kind of resembles a steam shovel. It's not a real world replica by any means, but the basic shapes are there, and the colors are devastatingly attractive. He's got wheels under the treads for roll on the desk play patterns, and a bevy of pegs and ports for both his guns and his oddly removable cockpit. The use of a universal peg and hole system is one of the calling cards of TFC's Hercules team, as is the blocky aesthetic. It very much reminds me of Transformers from 2005 and 2006, the era of Cybertron and the original classics filler waves. The shovel arm is ambulatory and even has some faux hydraulics. Original run X-Gravers may need a bit of shaving done on the inner ratchet joint, but that problem was rectified in very short order by TFC. That's not the breadth of this toy's ability to move, though, so let's shift panels and fold... THINGS! And by folding, I mean unfolding. Xgraver's transformation is literally a case of simply and geometrically unfolding and extending the box of his vehicle mode's main body. Thanks to all the tabs and well-placed swivels, this is a quick and pleasant process in either direction. There's a touch of automorph to deploy his feet, and his accessories can remain attached all the way through to his robot mode, if you swivel things carefully here and there. If the vehicle mode didn't get the idea across clearly enough, Xgraver's robot mode hammers home the Neo 2006 Transformers aesthetic I see in these guys. He's got a bit of G1 in his colors and his tread legs, but otherwise looks like a robot man born from chunk and hardness. It's a sculpt that does little to try to win you over if you can't accept its edges and weird proportions. The paintwork is clean, if a tad minimal, but I prefer the simpler color palette myself. His universal peg and hole system comes into play here as you have a myriad of options when it comes to placing his accessories, crane, and cab if you don't want to stick with where they were stored in vehicle mode. There's a specifically larger hole on his left arm for the shovel to use it as a hardcore melee weapon or grappling claw or giant eating utensil. Xgraver includes an identical pair of firearms. One is in a classic Constructicon purple, while the other is cast in a translucent red that calls back to, of all things, the Junkion Blacksmith Infinity Warfare set by Junkion Blacksmith, who may or may not be connected to TFC Toys, who knows? I'm of two minds about these being different. On the one hand, it totally messes with the symmetry of using both guns. On the other hand, I feel like the red one is a bonus piece that'd otherwise not be included. Some have painted the red gun's outer panels black to a cool effect as well. For all his chunk and bluster, this guy has got quite a bit of jointage. His head is on a massively emotive ball joint. Uh, this is maybe kind of in part due to some transformation steps, which may or may not actually be optional. I'm not really sure. It's kind of up to you. Uh, also, he's got some hell of light piping going on. I'm not even going to try to tell you otherwise. This is just... Look at that. That's crazy. Uh, his shoulders, despite being these huge just pieces of green armory are uh, are pretty poseable. Aside from this bit of shoulder motion here, he's got this bit of shoulder motion here. And then, kind of destroying the sculpt when you do so, he does have a forward and backward motion. Uh, his elbows are single-jointed, but decently ranged. Uh, they do kind of split apart when you bend them. That's something that he kind of just... He does. You have to be used to that. His bicep swivel is uh, is pretty good. His wrist joint's pretty good. It is actually not centered on the wrist, but by the time you would notice the non-centrage, you, you probably should just stop turning his wrist. Uh, if we take his enormous tail thingy, uh, if you do choose to leave it on there, out of the way, um, I can show you the full range of clickety 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 waist joint motion. Now, if this thing is left stored back here, then woe be to you. You only get a, well, still a couple of clicks of motion, but... Really, if it is getting in the way, then just, just move it out of the way and pose him, put it back in the way. Um, the way that this thing on his butt works is that if you don't put it on his arm and you leave it back here, this is actually really nice for uh, posing balance because it, it gives him basically a third leg so you can have him really just do whatever. You can even just stand him up on it and just have him going all like, Whoa, guys! <laughs> I'm, I'm the X-Graver! I make things no longer graves! Whoa! He's also got some ball-jointed hips uh, due to 
some kind of third mode. I don't really know what it is. Uh, uh, he's got cuts up here, which mean that he's got uh, an unlimited range of hip motion. And he's pretty much got double-jointed knees, although, again, uh, they do involve his kneecap blowing open like that. Um, as far as ankles, you don't really have any, because these things are just these auto-morphing flaps that come down. They do come down a little bit farther, although this, this can put the risk of, uh, of ungearing them into reality, but you can move them around a little bit if you do need to have a, a slightly different base on the bottom of his tread leg. But overall, like, this dude, for a guy who looks like a, a very Cybertron-esque G1 energy or Energon-esque guy, just, just big, chunky pieces of robot, um, I, I think he's actually pretty poseable. And that is part of what makes him uh, pretty cool. I mean, once you get over just how tread-leggedly wide-shouldered he is with his sculpt splitting apart and his kneecaps and elbow joints just blowing open into chasms whenever he bends his limbs. If you can deal with that, um, you'll be set. And if you can't deal with that, then just concentrate on, for crying out loud, look at that. How can you not let that distract you sufficiently enough to deal with the faults of this guy? Well, actually, some people can't. But you know what? Maybe you just hate the color red. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Except everything. By the by, my Xgraver has an assembly problem. Can you tell what it is? I'm gonna give you a hint. Check that out. Something ain't right. One of these things ain't not kinda not like unto the other. Uh, this thing is wrong. That thing is that thing flipped the other way around. Uh, this is an assembly error. So yours should not look like this. Unfortunately, uh, back when I got this guy, he was completely sold out everywhere and there wasn't really anything to do about it and it's such a minor thing I don't really care. But, for posterity's sake, I do have this little assembly error on my X-Graver, so, uh, be warned, ladies and gentlemen, his heel is not like the average heel. X-Graver is an experimental mixed bag that introduced the collector community to the aesthetic and delivery of the TFC Hercules team. His looks are among the most love or hate of the entire set but I feel his decent posability helps to keep him above the line of merely being a big robot's arm. Unless his blockiness takes you out of the experience, he's a solid and fun standalone toy with a few cool play options built within. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis. You know how I mentioned that I was able to buy an arm and a leg? Aside from being a really thinly veiled joke about the entire Hercules team costing an arm and a leg, that means that the next review is probably gonna be a leg. So stay tuned and let's see what happens whenever the review marked 150B actually gets recorded.